has been sporadically a problem area for you guys, but how did you like the way you guys were able to close this one out and build some momentum to start the fourth quarter tonight? Yeah, I mean, uh, we made shots. We made timely buckets. We had a couple turnovers there late in the game when they're kind of desperate to get some stops and they're trying to get out and you know speed the game up. But I felt like we were in control regardless. Uh, the end of the third is what did it for us. I mean, once you finish the third quarter with some good momentum, then we can ease into the fourth. But if we – not ease into it, but if fourth, the fourth, we have a little bit more momentum on our side if we finish the third quarter off better. And I think tonight we were tied up for it at like the two-minute mark, I want to say, and then we end up being up six going into the fourth. So that was key. And uh, in games in the past, we might have had some good momentum at the end of the third and then lose it quick in 30 seconds. You know, a team tie the game up or go up five or six, and now we're fighting uphill. So in the third quarters, I mean, every quarter feeds into the fourth, but the end of the third is, was huge for us tonight. Brad was kind of struggling with a shot for three quarters Yeah, he stayed with it. Stayed with it. That's what great players do. You know, no shots don't fall. A lot of great looks too. Uh, open threes that you know he felt that f f looked good leaving his hands. Um, but we don't worry about Brad. We know he'll get it going. And as long as he's aggressive to shoot the ball, though. So 22 shots, we can live with those. It's long averages for him. You know, you get more shots up, uh, more comfortable you get. So uh, good win in the forest, and just keep moving forward. You can't focus on a few things, <laughs> you know, you just – some players are so good that regardless of the scouting report or their tendency, like, you just got to play the game and not try to think too much out there. And rely on physicality, rely on my teammates, and uh, just go from there, you know. You might make adjustments throughout the game. You might change some stuff up throughout the game, but you can't dictate what these great players are going to do. You can't force them a certain way. You can't – you just got to go out there and play extremely hard and physical. What are those moments like for you when you're already in the starting you and you guys get to have that matchup all night? It's not even about us. It's not even a moment to me. It's not even a thing to me. Like, And I'm sure it's not really a thing to him no more. I mean, maybe when we were, when he was younger, coming into the league, trying to establish himself, and he'll see some of the household names. He would, But it's about winning a basketball game. and. Uh, it wasn't a one-on-one -on -one battle. He didn't approach it that way. I could tell he was just trying to play the right way and vice versa. How do you like that screening role with either you screening for Brad or vice versa, Brad screening for you? Yeah, I mean, anytime we can utilize our best ball handlers and scorers in different positions as screeners, as, as ball handlers, it's just going to make our attack even more balanced. Kevin, that dunk in the, the fourth quarter kind of ignited the arena. Can you tell us, walk us through that, what you saw? Yeah. Um, we got to stop, I think. Did we get to stop? We might got to stop and run out. And, you know, when guys, you know, sprint to the rim, like I think Nurk did on that play, got EG open, and he's such a great shooter. People flying at him and just forget about me for, for a split second. I'm there in the middle of the paint, and it's on me to finish. I'm glad I didn't pull up for a floater or, or a mid-range. I just wanted to be aggressive to get to the rim. I had missed a few shots that I thought I should have made early on. So I wanted to see one go down and um, – I'm glad the crowd got ignited from that. We missed our home crowd, been on the road for so long. So to, to feel their energy and their love was, uh, was cool. There's a called that OKC KD. Uh, just the, the, the lift there. That's the PHX KD. <laughs> Can you speak to the growing chemistry that you have with Nurk? Obviously, there was the Dallas game that happened with Grant Williams. And then <clears throat> Coach talked about the chemistry that you built with Nurk since the summer when you were training camp. But where do you see that it is now between you two besides you book and uh, Bill? Yeah, I mean, it's just when you get more comfortable being around somebody every day like this, then you just we get more and more comfortable. And Nurk trusts me, you know, that I'm going to catch some of those passes over the top that may be a little risky. I trust him to just thread the needle sometimes when I'm not, when I'm struggling to shoot the ball to get me a layup or something. So. You know, teammates, when you start to communicate without even having verbal, without having to talk, I think that's when you go to that next level as a teammate. And there's times when he can just look at me and I know, all right, I got a cut back door. And when he haul ass into the post, I'm like, I know what play this is. And, you know, so he, we kind of got a, 
just from being around each other this year, we, we understand each other and where he likes the ball, where I like the ball. And I think everybody is getting used to one another like that. Ever since uh, Brad came back, you guys are second in the league offensively. Um, is this kind of what you all envision, just this three-headed monster attack on the floor? Yeah, we just, yeah, yeah. You know, we wanted to be one of the best offensive teams in the league. Obviously, that's the way the league is going, where you got to score points if you want to stay in games. Um, obviously, defense is important. Um, but the best teams in the league do both at a high level. Um, shoot the ball pretty well, very efficient. Uh, high assists, low turnovers, you know. What we had today? It was crazy because I looked up. We had one assist like with like two minutes to go in the, in the first half. And I'm like, shit. And, you know, we got to go. And so, what, I want to say we had 14 assists maybe in that second half. Yeah, 14. Yeah, so that's, a, you know, that's the formula for us is everybody touching the basketball, we moving it, we getting on transition. We got back up to 50% shooting. We was, like, hovering around 37, 38. So that we, shot making was there in the second half. I think we just calmed down and settled in back home after being on the road for a while. And, I mean, you got to think about their team, too. They're missing three starters. Like, it's one of these games you can't – you got to just move on and throw away. And it's good practice for us to come back home, but next game is going to be a huge game. Those guys right underneath us, they playing in incredible basketball. Utah, right? Mm-hmm. Playing incredible basketball. So, we want to try to build off this win. Yeah, That's what I'm saying. So, we, we got to be prepared for this one. It's going to be a tough matchup. Okay, you guys have a terrific shot. Uh, say it again. Our shot making. You said you had some kind of ridiculously good. Oh, oh yeah. Game, uh, yeah, I'd really like to uh, credit the coaching staff for simplifying our offense. You know, we got some some nice sets that we run for for three pointers and back doors and stuff. But for the most part, we try to put our scores in the best position to be successful. Our shooters in the best position. Our rollers to the rim. And we're simplifying the offense, and we was able to get to our spots and not have to think too much and, and knock them down. And um, and I feel as though even though we, we, we may struggle shooting the ball earlier in the game, I think it's going to always come back around because we got good energy when we move the ball, when we play fast, when we keep it simple. And I think that's been a formula, just keeping it simple. Kevin, what do you try to take away, what do you try to take away when you're defending Giannis? What is like a priority, number one? I don't want to play too far off of him because he's so. It, it, I don't want to make it a mini fast break in the half court. So when you you see a lot of guys, Giannis got the ball at the three point line, they at the middle of the at the free throw line, or, and start to back up as he start to drive. And that's like, well, you no, you're, you're dead then, um, because he got a head of steam. He's so strong, he's so long and athletic that he can finish over top of anybody from almost the dot. So closing up that space, making him feel the pressure a little bit have to make a couple moves, have to spin, you know what I'm saying, have to think. Um, and it's it's tough doing it. I'm not saying it's easier said than done, but, you know, if you can try to be more physical and at the point of attack instead of taking that, you know, once he's full head of steam and then taking a hit, it'll make your life a little bit easier. But regardless of anything, it's always tough guarding him. Yeah, what I what I love about Bowl is his uh he has a way higher IQ than what people think. Um like you say, he passed us some shots that he could have shot, but he understand if we move the ball again, you might get it back on the other side. And he is not stepping outside of himself and doing things that he doesn't normally do. Uh, he's playing with energy. He's talking out there. Like, I love what he brings, man. I love his – I just love everything about Bo. And you could tell that everybody loves loves Bo and rooting for him. Even the crowd, every arena we go to, they're rooting for Bo. Like you said, Doc said that he's rooting for him when he's not playing his team. So, he he's just a great soul, man. I like being around him. I like to see his growth as a player. 
and his IQ is growing every single day for the game. And uh, we just want him to continue to build on this to a point where we expect him to do stuff like this even more every night. So we're going to stay on him. He's going to, you know, Bo's the type of guy, he's going to come to work regardless, not say nothing, keep his head down and work every day. Um, but it, we're also going to keep it encouraging him, but also, you know, you know, continue to hold everybody accountable. That's what's going to make us a better team.